Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to this week's video. I have an update video today on a few different philodendron. I've decided to separate this out because I actually have a lot of updates. I don't know why, I think everything's just growing really quick. So I have a philodendron update for you and then next time it's going to be an anthurium update. But first of all, I want to remind y'all that my feed is still on Amazon because I know y'all are buying it, I know you're absolutely loving it. Still, still blown away, still blown away by the comments, honestly. I've yet to find someone that says it's shit honestly. So that's all good to go. Merch again, right here. I am working on some new merch at the minute and it's going to be a very similar vibe to this one, or at least I'm trying to at the moment, just going through the semi-final stages of it. So I'll let you know when that comes out. I think you're really going to like it. One thing before we start this video, this little guy here, very, very cute. Look at him, look at him. This is beautiful philodendron gloriosum variegatum, or variegated gloriosum, and I am selling it in a raffle. The link is down below. Basically, you buy a raffle ticket, so you don't outlay thousands of pounds, hundreds of pounds, hundreds of dollars, whatever your currency is. You just pay for one ticket, pay for however many tickets you want, and you've got the chance of winning it and I will send it to you. It is open internationally as well, so I just wanted to mention that. Again, link is down below. He is rooted, by the way. He's just, he's nicely chilled in here, but that is him. He is absolutely beautiful, beautiful, and that is off my wonderful plant that is one of, like, the original Variegate Gloriosum that started its life at NSE, so there you go. So if you are interested in the raffle for him, the link is in my description, so have a look. And that's it. Let's get on with it. So I'm just going to pick some philodendron up and we're going to talk about it because I want to update you on these different plants for different reasons. One second. This is in no particular order. This is just the order that I can physically pick them up. So you might be looking at this guy thinking, he's cute. What is he? Do you remember the really big plowman eye that I repotted and I loved him and he was great? Well, story time. I took him home. I think I even showed you in the video that I took him home. You saw me put him into the car. Then there was, I think there's a very quick picture of him at home. He was fine for about three days and he couldn't handle it. I think he couldn't handle being repotted. He couldn't handle the environment change. He couldn't handle the substrate change, the humidity change. That's on me. I've done this for years, guys. I've done this for, what, five years now? Something stupid like that. And I want to let you know that all of us, especially me, can still fuck things up. So I nearly killed him is what's happened. So I've had to bring him back. He did have more leaves on, but they went very wilted. They sort of, once they'd wilted and they'd bent at the petiole, they kind of didn't stand back up. So I had to just cut my losses quite literally and chop him off. But he's grown very, very fast since. He's only been back maybe two, three weeks maximum. He hasn't been back very long. I think he was back shortly before I started working on those Neoplant videos. So he's been back a little bit, but he's already booming again. So I'm not that mad, okay? This is, did I even tell you what this was? <laughs> this is Philodendron Plowmanii, but it is the dark form. So basically he doesn't have any silver. And as far as Plowmanii goes, I've said this a million times on this channel, but I usually prefer the more muted plants. I love a bit of irrigation, don't get me wrong, but a lot of the times, if I can have something a bit muted, I will. So I'll show you him up close, because he is a stunning boy, and again, this isn't, as you can tell, it's still unfurling, that's why it's shaped like this. It's not even hardened off yet, but look how nice he is. Ooh, he's really cute. He's wobbly, but he's cute. And in the pot, there's like some remnants of where I used tape on him. There's still a stake. I think I was just trying to lodge the, the base in place. And I think at the time, he probably still had one leaf left when I originally cut him. And then I've eventually taken it off because, I mean, it looks stupid at that point. I'm all for taking leaves off. I'm not someone that sort of clings onto leaves. There's a lot to be said for whether you cut off leaves or not. Some people like to leave them on because of the plant's undergoing stress. It will take in the energy from that leaf and then suck it back into the plant. So a lot of people say don't cut them off. I'll be honest, I cut them off for aesthetics. So I cut it off because I prefer to look at this than look at this with a big gangly leaf that's had a rough ride. Okay, so that's what he looks like. There's a super quicker update on him. He will get repotted at some point. Obviously, I'm probably going to have to repot him again because he's nearly at the edge. I'll leave it a bit longer. And then I think what I've started to do with subsequent plants is I've repotted them here, but I haven't moved them from here straight away. So they do half the acclimation here in terms of the pot and the substrate. And then when I feel like they've acclimated, I then take them back to my house and then they've just got to do, you know, the light and the humidity. So I'm kind of halving the amount of acclimation that they get. But anyway, that's him. Super cute, super happy, super healthy, honestly, honestly, because the roots aren't terrible. They probably support this amount of plant really well now. Um, but that's him anyway. Philodendron Plowmanii. Dark? 
I don't know what the proper name is. I've got a few of these, and I don't really know why I have them. I guess I just missed them. This is Philodendron El Choco Red, and they're coming in super plump. Some of the old leaves, again, transited a bit battered, but the new ones are coming in very beautiful. Just a reminder of y'all to get a Choco Red at some point, because they're very nice. This one's had a little bit of water on it. I think I've dribbled a plant on it, but look at it. How cute, how pretty. I love these plants. Nothing to tell you other than they're growing nice and plump, look. Beautiful. Instagrammable. Instagrammable. Love that. Love that. See, so yeah, I've got about five of them. I mean, they're not really worth anything now, so I don't know if I'll sell them. I mean, if you want one, get in touch, but do you know what I mean? I think I've got about five and I'm just, I'm just growing them. I don't know. I don't know. Again, these I've had a bit of a journey with because it's so weird. They are easy plants, right? I'm not going to say they're not easy because they are. They're just a bit pale. And I've mentioned this before. I've been struggling to get to grips with it a little bit. So this is, oh, philodendron, is it Sharonii with Jose Bono, I think. Now, if listen, if you want something really jungly, this is your boy. So it grows really quite compact and quite stout for a climber. Yes, it is a climber, but you can probably see here, you can get really big, compact growth. I am selling these, by the way. I might put one up on the website soon. I don't have a ton. I maybe only have about five. Um, I'd like to keep one for me, maybe this one. But I've had some issues with, I wouldn't say feeding as such, just I've, I've just struggled to deal with the fact that it's paler. And maybe it's just because I like dark plants. But as you see, it's very healthy. All the new leaves have come in really nice. The old ones obviously are battered because they were shipped like that. But the new leaves, this is very new. It's not hardened. They're just a bit, just a bit pale, do you know what I mean? So it depends if you like that kind of vibe. Now, I think Sharonii is a little bit pale. Jose, I think they actually can get quite dark personally. I've got a Jose somewhere. Where's the Jose? Hang on, guys. I had a really pretty Jose. Has he gone up on a shelf? Oh, that'd be really sad if he has. Hang on, one moment. Oh, he's up there. I don't know if I can grab him. Two seconds. I'll attempt it. I will attempt it, but I'm not sure I can grab him. Oh, I'm not tall enough. If I pull him, I'm going to depot him. Oh, got him. Jose. See, Jose Bono, one of the parents, quite... I mean, I would say that's definitely darker. Also, look at this new leaf, by the way. Bonus update. Look how good that is. That's quite sexy. And it's weird because none of the other leaves grew like that, but all of a sudden, boom, it's taken off. Then this was a head cutting from my larger one that started dying at some point. Um, so I saved it by lobbing the head off. And I'm very happy with the result. But yeah, so that's darker. This one is just much, much, much lighter. And I don't... I do love the plant. I do love the plant. I think it would make a great climber. I guess it's just a bit paler than what I'm used to. But I... Maybe since it's so dense, I could actually see myself having this in the house. Because look how stout it is when it's this small. So imagine how it's going to get when it grows. Maybe I should pull one of these. What do you think? In the comments, should I put this on a pole, keep it super compact, and maybe take it to my house? Because I'm trying to avoid moss poles at the house, by the way. I just, I don't like moss poles. I'll use them for, say, a big monstera or something. Something that really needs a pole. But generally, all the fancy heart-shaped philodendron that climb, as much as I love them, I'm trying to avoid them. I just am. I just don't want to deal with poles. But he's quite sexy. Maybe I should do it. Let me know in the comments if you think I should do it, and I'll pick one. I do quite like him. As I say, it does grow stout just before I put him down. Can you see? Hopefully you can. If To be honest, I've had better growth than my supplier did. Can I show you here? Sorry if you can't see that. Internodal there from the supplier. Internodal from me is much shorter. My feed, y'all. But anyway, we'll pop him down. That's him done. Just put him here and I'll try not to tread on him. But he's very, very pretty and I honestly love the plants and they are easy. I suspect they like a lot of feed, but hey, it's getting fed. Don't know how many times a month, but it's basically whenever I water, which is maybe once every two weeks. So maybe it's getting fed every two weeks with a uh, nurture system with my feed. So don't know, don't know. But I'm, I'm, maybe I could try him. And you know what? If I hate him, I just bring him back. So maybe I should anyway. Anyway, moving on. Um, let's do something smaller because I have a lot of big ones to show you. Just want to show you these. These are doing super well. I have cut from them before. I have not cut from this one as it happens, but I have a shit ton of cuttings of these, like one leafers. I've got a couple of head cuttings. This is Philodendron bipanifolium aurea. Aureum, I should say. Basically variegated um, bipanifolium, um, variegated violin, they're called as well. Just a super quick one. This is this has reached danger levels now. This has gone super yellow. Um, but the old leaves, the, the, it is a nice plant. I suspect this is going to need to be chopped. We'll see how this goes. I suspect that's gone too far. There's like the tiniest bit. <laughs> see that? You can probably see that. The tiniest bit of green left on it. So 
What a shame, because it was going so well, so well. That's the thing with variegation, it's like, do you want to play the, play the game? But that's a very really quick update on that. I think that might be on the site, that one. Yeah, it says E. That might be the one that's on the site, and it's grown, so there you go. Right, next one. Oh, I am going to go back to this because I really like this. So when I just showed you the Sharonii hybrid, I had another hybrid in at the time. Very, very nice hybrid. This here is growing quite nicely for me too. This is Philodendron Billetai crossed with El Chaco, El Chaco? El Chaco Red. And I would like to think you can see both parents in there. I actually have both parents to show you in this video, funny enough, you've already seen the charcoal, but the billetai, I really hope you can see. If you just shaved the side, it would be a billetai, right? Petiole is very similar as well, not quite as orange, but they're there. And we do have a little bit of blush backing, not a ton, not a ton, but it is really, really nice. So that's grown really well for me as well. Oh, let me just pull this caterpillar off. I hate mushy caterpillars. I just want to pull them off. I don't know if you should pull caterpillars off. You probably can when they're all, you know, brown and crispy. I mean, generally I don't, but if they're mushy, I don't really, I don't really want them on the plant. But I don't have many of these. Do I only have one other one than this one? Uh, ooh, yeah. Guys, I've got this and one other. One other, and it is much smaller, but it came small, to be fair. But again, super nice growth. Super nice, plush, plump. Stout, very short internodal spacing, great aerials, looks like it's going to be a great propagator. There you go. Which is weird, actually. I say that because Billetai sort of propagates well. Choco, touch and go, right? But I don't really intend to cut it, so. He's really cute. We like him. We like him. So we'll pop him down as well. I'm running out of space to put all these plants. I have another video to film immediately after this one, and I've already coated shit with plants. Right, we'll do a small one. This guy here represents... A few Gloriosum. I know you're probably thinking, eh, Gloriosum, what? Basically, y'all might remember that for many years now, I've had too many Gloriosum in this shop. Now, I've got much, much less, but my quest is to find a dark form, right? And I've been keeping any plant that looks quite dark. And at one point or another, I thought it could be this guy. Look how dark that is. Look how dark this is. Look at that. Is it going to focus? Please, come on. For me, come on. There. Look how dark that is. Look how dark that is. I really hoped... Please, come on. Oh my god, it doesn't it doesn't want me there. I really hoped that it was going to stay dark, but now I'm not so sure. What do we think? I mean, to me, kind of just looks well fed. So, mm. I do have more than this. I have a couple of others, and I'm really just keeping an eye on them. I potted one up. You can't really see it, and it's very wobbly, because it's in a pot that's a bit too big. Um, that's up there, and it's more of the same. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's adorable. How cute, how cute. But I... <laughs> I don't think it's dark form. If you've got a dark form for me that you're absolutely certain is dark form on Instagram, please tag me in it. Please tag me in it because I'd like to see. Because I need to know realistically what I'm comparing it to. Because I'm starting to worry that dark form is a myth. I'm starting to worry it's a myth. My understanding of dark form, by the way, is not that it has minimal veining. This is not like a forgetty eye dark form situation. My understanding is just that the green itself is very dark and it can still have veining. That's my understanding of dark form. So let me know what you think because... I don't know, I don't, I mean, he is very dark in places, but again, is he just well fed? Nobody knows, nobody knows. Right. Oh god, a massive one. Right, I thought I'd take a second to show you this ferocious billetai, and I would be proud of him under a normal circumstance. However, this is, it's basically a piece of my original variegated billetai that never came back. I do have another piece that has like very minimal variegation, and then it just stopped again. It's over there, it's nowhere near as big. But I just thought I'd show you this one because he's, bless him, he's living his best life. Don't get me wrong, he's having a great time. I'm just forever bitter could you say? But yeah, he's grown so well. I have no intention of putting him on a pole, by the way. If I was going to pull something, it's definitely this jungly looking one, 100%. I don't, I don't know. I just don't really want built in the house. Maybe I'm just jaded now. I don't know. Maybe if it was variegated, I would. Uh, admittedly, he's a bit snobby, but yeah, how cool is he? And he's come from just a little boy at the bottom. He's literally grown from a cutting from one of my belt eye over God knows how long. But he's just looking so stout recently and so dark. I love how dark these things get. No wonder it was a good cross with the chocolate to make this other plant uh, that I held up before, because both plants are quite dark, so I kind of appreciate that. This is the newest leaf. Ugh. He's looking very glossy. How nice is he? Yeah, non-variegated, variegated billetai. Still love the plant. I'm not knocking the plant. I do love billetai. I just can't be bothered with all of this. 
You know what I'm saying? And I can't be the only one. I've done this too many years, guys. I really have. There's just certain shit that I can't be bothered with anymore, and this stuff is kind of it. But I probably won't sell him just in case he actually derogates from me, because you know what? The day I sell him will be the day that someone posts on Instagram, oh my god, I bought this, and look, it's variegated. And I know that that plant is just waiting for me to do it. It's waiting for me to do it. Right, hopefully this doesn't slap my microphone, because that is boing. That's quite triumphant. Do you remember this guy? He's big. I'll have to stand back with some of these. He is Philodendron Biltai crossed with Philodendron Hercules. This is his newest leaf. Is it? No, I'm lying. It's not. It's the one facing you that's his newest leaf. But look how big. <laughs> this plant is massive, guys. Now, I've literally sung this plant's praises before. I don't know where you can find it. I'm not saying it's super rare as in high value. I'm saying it's super rare as in I don't think anyone wants it. But I'll tell you something, if you can get your hands on it, I actually would. I think I might prefer it a little bit to the normal bill tie because the bill tie before looked, I don't want to say leggy or gangly because it doesn't. But this one just, it just stays super stout. Like, look, can you see? <clears throat> Can you see the internodal spacing on that? Can you see it? Can you see it, guys? It's insane. And I really like it. Uh, needless to say, it roots well. But I really love this plant. And I haven't done anything with him. I've just let him do his own thing. He's got so much nectar coming off him. It's ridiculous. Look at him. That's massive, man. Ah. Oh. So if you ever get the chance to have one, maybe you like Billatai, but you want something else. Maybe you just love pointy boys, right? This is Brilliant. If you can find one, I actually urge you to get one because, Jesus, he's so tough. It's way tougher than a build tie. The, um, the Hercules that it's crossed with must be tough as nails. Like, it must be tough as nails because this is fantastic. So, there he is. Looking really cute. Still a bit orangey, but not super orangey. But I still love him. Oh, my God, look. Mmm, <gasps> that's nice. So, there you have it. Philodendron build tie by Hercules. Really sexy. Ah, I thought I was done. I thought I was done. I've got one more plant. Can you see him? Can you see him down here? I'll pick him up for you in a moment. So, I asked you guys on Instagram a couple of days ago, hey, give me some crawler ideas for the house. And it's funny because I was already thinking of adding this plant. This down here, and I will pick it up. You'll see why I haven't picked it up yet. This plant down here is Philodendron Dean McDowell. Great plant. There's some pros and cons. I'll go over them in a moment. But I want to show you him because he's awesome. However, <sighs> I don't think I can pot him yet, which means I have to cut him. But I kind of want your advice, so I'm going to hold him up now, and I will talk about him. But I wonder if I can put him on a thing. Hang on. Let me put him on a thing. Yes, that is the technical term for stool. Let me just try putting him here, like this. We might make a good thumbnail, this one. Oh, shit. Right. How does he look? He looks good. Look at him. How does he look? Look at him. Right, so if you didn't know... This is Philodendron Dean McDowell, and yes, he is cool. This is my head. This is the leaf, you feel me? Um, so, Dean McDowell is a hybrid of Philodendron Gloriosum and Philodendron Pastazanum. Now, it's good, it's tough as nails. Personally, if you struggle with crawlers, if you struggle with Gloriosum, you probably maybe not struggle with this one. I'd be surprised if loads of people struggle with this plant, because it grows in the bloody dark. Honestly, it's just, I've got a whole tray there that I, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It's just, it's too much. At one point, these did take off, probably in 2020, when everyone was sort of looking for new stuff, um, because they used to be dirt cheap. I remember when I started my shop, say a Gloriosum was a £95. This would be about £60. It's very, very cheap. No one wanted them, and it was weird when they took off. But anyway, so this guy is great. He has all of the good parts, visually, in terms of the leaf, of Gloriosum and Pastazanum. My issue is, and it's a lot of people's issue, this is not just me saying this, I know a lot of y'all share my opinion. Some of the issue is this. I just turn him around, okay. What you will see is, can you see it? Can you see it? Yes. We'll tackle this in a moment because he's done me a solid here, but never mind. So if you look at the length of these petioles, they're quite long. And Gloriosum generally, do I have one? But yeah, I suppose. I'll pick up this little one. Gloriosum generally can grow quite stout, right? And I always talk about this all the time on this channel, leaf to petiole ratio. So this is the size of the leaf. This is the size of the petiole. Good, good ratio. Love that. Love a bit of chunk, you know what I'm saying? But... The Philodendron Dean McDowell does not do this, okay? I feel really weird right now because there's a lot of my body in the shot, guys, and I'm like, what is going on? But anyway, it's been a long day. 
The Fildern and Dean McDowell does not do this. It takes a lot of its petty old inheritance from Fildern and Pastazarnum. Fildern and Pastazarnum, I don't have any in the shop other than whatever the hell that is at the back there, the big sort of mass behind me. Um, that has longer petioles generally. So when this has been hybridized, it's taken it from that. That is normally what people hate. They hate how gangly this is. Now, if you can get past that, Dean McDowell is absolutely brilliant as a plant and I can't recommend them enough. If you can get past that, you could put them in a darker area, probably gonna grow. Honestly, they're probably gonna grow. I'm not exaggerating. Somebody will tell you in the comments that I'm right. They just grow. The good thing this plant has done for me, can you see this? Can you see this? <laughs> now, Gloriosum doesn't do this. I don't know why this guy has done this, to be honest with you, because he hasn't been sat in that tree. He's been sat on the floor. He is, he's never tried to grow downwards off the pot. That's what you'd probably expect from a typical crawler. Now, I don't know if, you know, Dean McDowell do that anyway. I don't know. This guy hasn't. He's just gone, you know what? Forward is my path. I'm going to continue growing forward. So in that sense, he's done me a solid, right? Because I can chop him and he's not dipping and it's not a nightmare. My issue is roots are in here. These are all dry. So these are fresh. I've got nothing to work with. I've got nothing to work with. Now, I don't want to buy a big long pot, guys, because they're a nightmare. I want to just have a round pot. I know they're really annoying crawlers, whatever. I get that. So I don't know what to do. I really wanted to do a repot after this video, basically, you know, potting it up and having a great time. But I don't think I can do it. So I don't know what to do. And I would like your suggestion. I mean, I could cut him, but I'm going to lose all the size. And you can see his new leaf. He's not mucking around. He's quite a big land. Now, I really hope this persuades you to get a McDowell, by the way, because they're so cheap now. You should really get one. Um, again, at least try it out, you know what I'm saying? But he's quite a big boy. So I don't. I also don't want to lose that. But also, I'm just going to have to... Uh, dribbling on myself. I'm going to have to lose quite a bit of him unless I do get a long pot, which I don't want to do. I don't think anywhere makes a long pot that's decent because it needs to be self-watering because it's going on a really pretty wood floor. So I don't know. I'm going to pop him down here. He's dribbled on everything. He's, he's very rude, this boy. He's a very rude boy. But... On a serious note, how beautiful is that? It is very beautiful. They can be a bit darker than this. He is a little bit pale, but he's been really close to the light. So I think he'll darken down. It's, you know, you can see in the past he's not had most feeds because honestly, I neglected him. And I don't say that lightly. He's had so many missed waterings, barely any feed. Maybe if I've had a little bit left in the watering can, I've chucked it in, but generally he's not even been fed. So I've only just recently started feeding him and then we've got this already, which looks better. So I don't know. Tell me what you think I should do. Give me your advice. And I will leave him there while I do my outro because he looks absolutely sick, does he not? So, thank you for watching this video today, guys. I look forward to your comments. Uh, feed is in the description. The link to that beautiful raffle for the Variegate Glory Awesome is in the description as well. And, oh, merch, merch, merch as well is in the description. Thank you very much for watching this video, guys. Please leave a like if you liked what you see. Please, if you haven't already subscribed, I would love it if you could do so. And I'll see you in the next one where we're going to talk about some quite sexy Anthurium, actually. Bye, guys.